Hello friends, a quick update today. I'll be back again tomorrow, so please stay tuned. So, regarding the end times and the Islamic perspective, friends, I've shared a lot about that, haven't I, in the past, and I continue to do so, because I think it's important to just take a look and listen to what's being taught in the Islamic eschatology world. And there's so much confusion in the Islamic narrative of the end times, in terms of the Mahdi, Isa, Dajjal, Muslims who really believe in their Islamic end times are going to be extremely confused. Let me remind you, the Mahdi is, to paraphrase it, he's the Messiah type figure, the one who unites the Islamic Ummah or the community of believers. The second person, Isa, the Islamic version of Jesus Christ, he's actually the fake Jesus. He's the one who's also coming in the Islamic end times, the one who actually submits himself to the leadership of the Mahdi and together they fight the Dajjal. In some narratives, it's Isa, the guy in the middle left, who fights the Dajjal. Dajjal is the Islamic Antichrist, the Islamic person who is the enemy of Islam, Dajjal, that's how they call him. The Islamic Antichrist is Dajjal who comes to fight against these two guys. But Jerusalem, again, is pivotal in the Islamic end times. But friends, we know in the word of God, well, we know, period, full stop, that our God is not the author of confusion. Let us be clear what the scriptures teach us about these two people, the beast and the false prophet. And what do they actually do? What does this beast empire do? These ten nations, the or these ten kings, the ten horns, the ten toes of iron and clay, this coalition, what do they actually do? In verse 12 of Revelation 17, we can trust these words. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. So in the Islamic version, the Jal could possibly be the Lamb of God, because in their narrative, it's the Dajjal that the Mahdi and Isa will be fighting against. The Dajjal is the enemy of the Muslims, the enemy of Islam. In Revelation chapter 19, we'll go there now. I'm going to speak about this in great more detail, Lord willing, tomorrow. Revelation chapter 19 reads, And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, those ten horns, the ten toes, the ten kings, the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him, the Lamb of God, who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet. So we could say the Mahdi and Isa will be captured, who worked signs in his presence, Isa by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image, these two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with a sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him, the Lord Jesus, who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. So we can trust our scriptures, can't we? So if Satan indeed has instigated this cunningly devised fable about the end times for the Muslim world, surely the Islamic world is set up 
for disaster, but there is still hope because the Lord is merciful. He is very gracious. He is able to reveal the truth even during these times that are coming. Now, the video clip I want to share with you. <clears throat> I came across this guy. This guy is called Saeed Muhammad Bakr Ghazwini. He's a Shia cleric or let's put it this way, Iraqi Iranian religious Shi'i cleric, but he's also an Iraqi American Shi'i scholar. He's currently based in America at the Islamic Institute in Dearborn, Michigan, and he teaches on these things, on the end times. Now, under the description of this video I'm about to share with you, which is eight minutes long. I want you to listen to what he's saying. In the description of this video of his, he writes, the followers of the school of Ahul Bayt, which is Arabic phrase, which means the holy family of Muhammad, via Muhammad's daughter Fatima and her husband Ali and their sons, their two sons, Al Hussein and, Hus and Hassan. So he's from the progeny of Muhammad. That's the, this group of the Shiite. Uh, branch, he writes, the followers of the school of Ahl Bayat have always condemned the war, the war crimes and gross injustices committed against the Palestinians. He continues, but there's an aspect to the Palestinian cause which makes it all the more important. The land of Palestine is associated with the final saviour's arrival and his fight against the evil powers of the world. He's saying there's a final saviors, or with the final saviors arrival, and his fight against the evil powers of the world. He also writes, pray for the liberation of Palestine, may Allah hasten his reappearance of the Mahdi. In this video that I'm about to play, and when I've done playing it, I'll end this, this stream, he says in this video that he's aware of some Christian teachers who have identified the Mahdi as the Antichrist. So it's getting out there, friends. Some of these teachers are very aware that our end times, especially the book of Revelation, speaks about the beast and of the false prophet. It's only a matter of time now. I believe that when the followers, the Muslims, who are really earnestly seeking the truth, will come to find out the eventual reality of this deception that they've been entrapped with. I pray that they will come to the knowledge of the truth, that in fact the Holy Bible has the truth. It's Jesus Christ, the Lord God, who's coming in all his glory, mentioned in the book of Revelation, on a white horse with a sword coming out of his mouth and he will make righteousness a reality in this world. Not the Mahdi, not Isa, it's Jesus Christ. But listen to this video and like I said, I'll be back tomorrow. The Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The hadith states, on the 23rd of the month of Ramadan, there will be a grand call in the heavens. Jibra'il will make that announcement that the Mahdi has now reappeared or is about to reappear. People are getting ready. Go three months forward on the night of Ashura in Masjid al-Haram, the Imam السلام, is waiting for the 313 companions to gather. All the 313 from around the world, they gather in Masjid al-Haram. Allah takes them there. He shows them how to get there on Laylat Ashura. Now Jaysh al-Sufyani, the Sufyani and the evil powers, they're looking for the Mahdi. They're wait waiting for him. Any minute he's going to leave, you know, come out. Because Jibra'il made that call. The Imam is in Mecca. He prays Maghrib and Asha' Jama'ah with the 313. Then, Imam al-Baqir al tells us this. Then he puts his back towards the Kaaba to face the crowd and he gives a speech. Even the text of the speech, brothers and sisters, has been documented in our books. And Imam al-Baqir says what the Mahdi will say. What he will say to the world. Read his speeches. They're beautiful. They give you hope. They give you faith. And then towards the end of his speech, the Imam alayhi salam, he reminds the world of his grandfather, Abi Abdullah al-Hussein. Ala ya ahl al-alam, ana samsam al-muntaqim. Ala ya ahl al-alam, inna jaddi al-Hussein qutla atshana. He says this to the world. So the 313 are now surrounding the Imam. His movement begins. Who hears? Sufyani. 
Sufyani hears that the Mahdi has now emerged from Mecca. Sufyani sends an army of 70,000 people, an army of 70,000 strong men to go and fight the Mahdi. They come from the Syrian region. They go south to Medina. So they hear the Mahdi has appeared where? Mecca. Mecca is where to Medina? It's to the south of Medina. So the Sufyani sends his powerful army and he tells them, go to Mecca and assassinate the Mahdi. That 70,000 strong army leaves Medina. By the way, you know what they do in Medina? They desecrate the city. There will be some challenging days. The hadith states, anyone whose name is Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein will be massacred by the army of Sufyani. Allahu Akbar. They're going south to Mecca. They reach an area called Bayda. It's not too far from Medina. One day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was standing on Bayda, the land of Bayda. He looked at the land and he cried. He told his companions, my companions, one day an army here in Bayda will try to go and kill the Mahdi when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy them. How does Allah destroy them? Allah sends Jibra'il to that land called Bayda. You have 70,000 of the army of Sufyani. With his wings, Jibra'il with his wings, he splits the ground open. The, the, the ground swallows the 70,000. Al-Khasfu bil Bayda. That is one of the signs of the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi. And it is a definite sign. Min al-alamat al hatmiya So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets, gets rid of that army. So Imam al-Mahdi ajallahu ta'ala faraja. He waits the following day, which is now the day of Ashura. He waits for 10,000 supporters. That is the next inner circle of the Imam. The, th the very close ones are 313. And 50 of the 313 are women, by the way. 50 of them are women. The Imam waits for his next second circle of supporters, which are 10,000. Once they join, these people are very faithful, but not as high as the 313. They come, they join the Imam, the Imam leaves Mecca. He goes north. Now the army of Sufyani is no longer in his way. So the Imam salam, goes north and then he makes a northeast turn towards Iraq. On his way to Iraq, the armies of Yamani and Khurasani join the Imam They come, they pledge him allegiance. The Imam first goes to Karbala. Something emotional happens in Karbala, not to mention it now. He goes to the grave of Imam Hussein And he shows some of the oppression that happened to Imam Hussein. Then he goes north to Kufa. Because the headquarters, the capital of the government of Imam al-Mahdi is in Kufa. That's the capital of the government of Imam Ali also. So he goes to Kufa, he establishes his government there. Then the Imam is given instructions by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go to Palestine. So the Imam departs with his companions and they go towards Palestine. On his way, as Sufyani tries to stop the Imam, he fails to stop the Imam. Allah grants him victory, he goes to Palestine and the Imam liberates Palestine from occupying forces. We don't exactly know who they are. The hadith does not specify who they are, but it says occupying, occupying forces in Palestine, the Imam will liberate Palestine from them. Now up until this point, the non-Muslim world is just watching. They don't get involved yet. Yes, some Muslims like the Sufyani and others, so-called Muslims, terrorists, they try to stop the Imam. But the Christian world, the non-Muslim world is just observing here. They're like, you know, this is a Muslim thing. Let's not get involved. When Imam al-Mahdi liberates Palestine, now the lobbies start mobilizing Western powers or non-Muslim powers and they come to fight the Mahdi. They mobilize their armies, they come to Palestine, they want to fight the Mahdi now. Imagine this scene, the whole world is watching, massive armies are just about to fight the Imam in Palestine. Right before the war starts, something miraculous happens. What happens? Suddenly, Isa ibn Maryam descends from the heavens with 800 supporters, 800 of his companions. He descends from the heavens and he comes down. Now initially it seems the Christians are confused. On whose side is he? Maybe now he came so we can get rid of this Mahdi. Some of them do think that even until today, listen to some of their priests, they talk about the Mahdi being the Antichrist. Yes, I've seen a speech by a very influential reverend who says this Mahdi is the Antichrist whom Jesus will kill. So they have this idea. So Isa السلام, comes, the world is now anxious, what's going to happen? So the Christians think he's going to side with them to kill the Mahdi. They're observing. Isa السلام, walks to Al Imam al Mahdi. It's the time of Salah now. In Jerusalem, in Palestine, in Beit al Maqdis. What happens? 
Al-Imam al-Mahdi, ajal Allah ta'ala farajah, tells him, Ya Ruh Allah, out of humbleness. He tells him, lead the prayer. Isa alayhi salam puts his hand on the shoulder of the Mahdi and he says, you have a greater right to it, Ya Ibn Rasulullah. You lead the prayer. Al-Mahdi stands, Allahu Akbar, Isa ibn Maryam stands before him and he prays behind him. When the Christian world sees Jesus praying behind the Mahdi, they all join forces to support Al-Imam al-Mahdi, ajal Allah ta'ala.